What's going on, y'all? So today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to get a free car, and then I'm going to make a part two on how to discharge your car payment to actually get it for free, right? So y'all have to understand is that every time that your social security number is being ran, um, that's security collateral. So these places, they get paid every single time your security is being ran, regardless if they deny you or they approve you, right? So a lot of these corporations are straight evil in the in this in this area because they're denying people, but they already ran your social security number and they still got paid for it, right? So y'all have to when y'all start researching and y'all start doing the work on your own, y'all have to understand that um, you have to take back what's yours. Every time you sign your name on a document, every time you bring your social security number, that object or whatever it is is yours, and you have to fight for it. Uh, majority of the times because they don't want to give it to you because they are getting paid for it right so I want y'all to be more strong on your feet when y'all come in into these obstacles right so um, when going to go get a car and it doesn't even matter what kind of car it is um, this car can be a hundred fifty thousand dollars to whatever it is but you know the bigger the the car is the amount of the car is the more of a fight that you got to put up right so i su i just suggest you guys you know just to go find the car that you want that you feel like you're uncomfortable in and then y'all go from there right so there's three big steps that i want you guys to pay more attention to and this is the car itself and how much the car is uh the location to where the car is going to be at and then the final thing is your credit score because it really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter your credit score. But if you guys can follow these step by steps, y'all gonna get what y'all want. But um, like I say, the bigger the 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 car is, the amount of the car, then the more of the fight you have to put up. So that's just like somebody got a six fifty credit score, and they trying to go in there and they trying to get a hundred fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, or even an eighty thousand dollar car. Of course, you have to put up more of a fight than somebody that got like an eight hundred credit score. Which if you guys see in my last previous, uh, one of my previous videos, I showed you guys on how to obtain an 800 credit score. So once you guys take control of your consumer report, then it's going to be a lot more easier for you guys to get that, right? So let's jump more into this video, right? So first thing first, we're going to talk about the car that you want. So when getting your car, you want to make sure that you guys get the car that you want and you want to do your research and everything on this car, right? How much the car is, because once you know what car you want and what the car is um, and where you're getting it from, you want to get all that stuff printed out because um, it's going to run on to uh, uh, step two of this process once you find out the car, because then you want to go to your uh, nearest bank, like a credit union or so, um, and you want to give them, I don't, so, you can go to the dealership and do this whole process, but I'd rather go to the horse's mouth, not the horse's ass, right? Because when you go to the horse's mouth, now you know who's denying you and who's approving you, you know? And if you go to the credit union that's in the area of where you're trying to get that car, most likely you can do a one, more of a one-on-one -on -one talk versus having to go through a dealership and then they telling you that you got denied. Now you have to ask them questions. Well, what banks did you guys run my stuff through? You know, and a lot of them, they get upset and they don't want to tell you this and that because, you know, they just have their own little funnel system that they're trying to do, right? So what I would suggest is to, once you guys get the information of the car that you want, is to take that to um, the credit unions around in your area. Um, uh, this is going to take about a 14 day process of doing all this because you want to see and you want to make sure that you're getting everything and you want to reach everybody. You know, some of y'all might get approved on your very first go around. Some of y'all might take y'all a couple tries, but at the end of the day, this is all a numbers game. So as long as you stick to it, you're going to get get what you want. Right. So you're going to take it to the nearest uh, credit unions. Um, you're gonna uh, basically give them the paperwork. You wanna explain what you're trying to get, and then you wanna ask them, are you approved or are you denied? Let's say, for instance, you took it to the dealership 
you want to do the same process too because um, if you went straight to the dealership versus going to the credit unions, you want to ask them the same thing. You want to ask them, hey, was I approved or was I denied? I just rather go to the credit unions because it makes it a lot more easier. Um, you want to, you want to. At this point, you're talking to the sales rep. You want to ask them, are you approved or are you denied? And they should uh, most likely a lot of them. A lot of times, they're not going to give you the answer that you're looking for. So if they're not giving you the answer that you're looking for, of course, because they can't make the overall decisions, you want to go speak to the financial advisor, which is the person that's over them, right? And then you want to ask them the same thing. You want to ask them, are you approved or are you denied? Um, and why were you denied? If they can't give you the answer, then of course the underwriter is the next person that you want to go to. Um, but when you're talking to the rep, and then when you're talking to the financial advisor, before you even get to the underwriter, you want to make sure you're asking all of them um, if they can get a letter stating that what they said sent to your email or sent to your home. Uh, but why you, uh, of course, if you got denied, you want to know why you're denied in this in this in this uh, matter, because you got to remember, like I said before, if somebody's running your social security and then you're signing all this documentation, you know, or putting whatever your information in, um, they're already getting paid for it. So if they come back and they're denying you, that means there's some type of fraud somewhere. And we want to make sure we can stop this fraud before it can get any further, right? And that also leaves you guys a paper trail on whatever you're trying to get. So let's say you want to, you have to go to court for anything. I mean, you have your paper trail from when you as the rep, then you got your paper trail when you went to your financial advisor, and now you got your paper trail when you went to the underwriter, right? So I want you guys to always remember that to make sure you get everything in documentation, make sure you get everything in paperwork, because that's going to help you build your case, right? So, so now when you get to the uh, underwriter. So the underwriter is the one that makes the final decisions on anything. Um, they're the head over the rep and of course the uh, finance manager. They're the ones that go, they're able to give you um, why you were denied specifically, right? So what you want to tell them, the first thing you want to tell them that you're going to say, um, you want to say that this is going against the law according to the fair uh to the equal credit opportunity act which is confined in 15 USC 1691C and it is person to civil liability under 15 USC 1692K those codes are very important and i want you guys to study these codes before y'all do anything right and i'm going to say it again i'm going to say uh 15 USC 1691C, and then study also 16, uh, 15 USC uh, 1692K. Those two, two codes are very important. Now, um, so let's say, right, for instance, there are a lot of these places, it, like I said from the very beginning, it became a habit to them, right? So they're not going by law. They're only find it, uh, following a, a guidebook of what um, was passed down to them. So they don't know the law. So you have to um, express the law. You have to show them the law and where it states it at, right? Because this is how you guys can get your remedy at the end of the day, by showing them because they don't know. They're so busy uh, doing what they used to do, denying people, taking their Social Security, and then it's just, you know, it's just the end of that but we're going to enforce it and this is how you guys gonna get what y'all want y'all have to be straight with them you have to let them know what these laws say and that's why i want you guys to study it this video is about to cut short so i'm gonna start up another one hey what's up y'all so this is part two of the video um if y'all haven't seen part one go ahead and check that out and i'm gonna jump right back into part two because i don't want to run too much out of town so once again, you guys want to give them the codes, which is a 15 USC, a 1691C, and then you want, 
y'all want to give them 1692k and that's 15 usc 1692k those two codes are very important i want you guys to remember that and i want you guys to study these codes so y'all can um go through this battle with them because you're going to get what you want um you have to enforce the law on them y'all have to remember that y'all are in control they are not in control because they need you for their uh corporation to stay relevant right so that's why your name and your social security number is very valuable in this matter so let's say that um you tell them those codes and then uh they tell you that they d disagree with what you're saying and they're just giving you an opinion on how they feel so a lot of times too y'all have to remember that like i said stated in the last video is that these corporations they are so terrible they so stuck on um they're so stuck on like their old ways like they don't know the law it's a guide that's been passed down um from person to person even century to century and, like they're not they're not using the codes they're not knowing the law so um you want to tell them you want to say hey if if you if you disagree then can you show me in the consumer law where y'all saying what y'all saying exactly? Because you want to make sure that you're uh, backed by the law and you don't want to get caught up into any fraudulent activities because at the end of the day, they can put it back to you and say, okay, well, this is the person, John Doe is the person that signed their name on this contract. Um, so we're going to hold him accountable. And this is the reason why a lot of that stuff is like fraud when it comes to repossessions and foreclosures and stuff like that man all that stuff is a big scam and it's big fraud so i might have a video i'm gonna drop on that too um a while all that stuff is illegal because they can't take back from you if it's already yours right any type of any time that you run your social security through anything everything is already prepaid and we're gonna get in more in detail in more in detail with that, right? So you want to say to them um, that you thank them. You want to thank them for their opinion, but we have to perform on what the law states. And you you want to tell them that um, you want to tell them that the laws governs those transactions. So they can say how they feel all they want, but they they are governed by those laws. And you want to make sure that y'all stand on y'all game when it comes to talking to them. Y'all want to make sure that y'all write everything out too before y'all even go talk to them. Matter of fact, y'all want to make sure y'all get like a camera or get somebody to record y'all while you're on the phone or go get an app or so because that can help you guys out too. So let's say, for instance, y'all have to go to court or whatnot. And y'all done build y'all case because y'all now y'all have y'all letters. And um, if y'all need any more proof, now y'all have a recording of who this person y'all was on the phone with. If they can record, you can record too. So y'all want to make sure that y'all record those inf those call calls information and um, continue to you know what I'm saying get what y'all want. So let's say, so I'm reading from this because I have a whole script of what I, what I was saying. Um, so now if they continue to go back and forth to you about what the law is saying and they're basically giving you an uh, opinion of what the law is saying, but you know what I'm saying? You want to tell them to back it up on an affidavit of truth. Now, when it comes to an affidavit of truth, a lot of them, they don't even want to deal with this affidavit of truth because, like, they already know that that can be held against them in the court of law. So you want to tell them, say, hey, um, right, uh, can I get an email or can I get a letter of what you're stating on an affidavit of truth? And, um, 
if you can send that to me and I'm gonna write mines and I'm gonna send that to you guys real soon. You wanna say, I'm gonna send this to you guys real soon. But I want y'all to write down what y'all said on an affidavit of truth. Because, you know, that's very powerful and that can help your back. And uh, just in case this all goes to court, because now they, they're they being fraud. And also let them know that, hey, uh, before you about to hang up or before you leave, let them know that if anything changes to give me a call or send something to my email or write a letter to my house, if anything changes. A lot of times when you say that, you probably gonna get a phone call, most likely, and you're gonna, they're gonna say, hey, Mr. John Doe, hey, you're approved, because they don't wanna go through that whole court system process knowing that they're they're wrong, right? So, also too, you also wanna tell them about 12 CFR Part 1002, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, regu Regulations B. Now, I'm going to say it again. You want to tell them about 12 CFR Part 1002 Equal Credit Opportunity Act Regulations B. Now, y'all can go on Google and type in all these codes that I'm giving you because these are going to help you on the long run. Definitely when it comes to uh, making y'all script of uh, what y'all going to say. Y'all want to create your own script. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all the way back to the beginning. If you guys are approved or denied, y'all want to make y'all a whole little script before y'all go on there. Now, if y'all got a, this is why I say it takes a 14 day process. Because that 14th process, y'all going to be playing around, you know what I'm saying? Trying to make sure y'all get y'all scripts together before y'all get to that right one. And then y'all just going to knock them out. Right? So, once again, that code is 12 CFR Part 1002 uh, Equal Credit Opportunities Act Regulations B. And that one, it basically states that if I'm a denied for exclusions of my credit, this can be, in most uh, cases, classified as discrimination and let them know that. You want to let them know that. That now I feel like this is discrimination because you guys are trying to deny me. And everybody, we all have a limited amount of credit. You have a limited amount of credit. I have a limited amount of credit. Y'all just got to know how to use it. Y'all know y'all gotta know how to fight back. Y'all gotta know how to argue for what's right. And this is how you guys gonna get what y'all want. So I'm gonna make a part two of this, uh, another part of this video, and this is basically goes into more detail on how to discharge the debt. You know, because they're supposed to disclose you with uh, a certain amount, with uh, another contract, and this is how you're able to get out of this whole car payment and keep the car once you in the car. So y'all just stay tuned to that next one. Now, if y'all want like a step-by-step -step, um, guide on like what to say and how to do it, then y'all can just send me a DM and I'll just uh, create one for you. It's pretty simple, um, this whole process. And just go from there. If y'all like, if y'all feel like everything is of value from the, all this information that you learned, just send me a, a like, a comment, and a follow. Thank you.